uh, we have been uh, following a case very closely of a, a wonderful nun in uh, from the uh, uh, Nashville uh, Dominicans in Nashville, uh, who has gone around the country on many, many, many times in different Catholic settings and given talks about the topic of you know Catholic sec- or Catholic understanding teaching on sexuality on a whole broad range, you know, the marriage, uh, homosexuality, contraception, you know, you know cohabitation. All these, all of these things have been part and parcel uh, of her talk. Sister Jane Dom. Dominic, a, a very lovely nun, and again, very faithful to the church. She went down to Charlotte, North Carolina, to uh, Charlotte uh, Catholic High School uh, last week, and all of a sudden, uh, she uh, sets and the giving Catholic teaching, and all of a sudden, the whole uh, <laughs> the, the whole student body present there, and they just had this eruption. It turned into this massive controversy. So we wanted to kind of get to what the bottom of this was, because there was a lot of confusion. A lot of very, very uh, traditional-minded Catholics immediately said Sister had been thrown under the bus by the local bishop. Sister had been thrown under the bus uh, by the uh, uh, by her own congregation, her own uh, uh, group in Nashville, and, uh, and all she was doing was teaching Catholic Catholic teaching. So we have with us right now, joining us live, David Haynes, who is the uh, communications director for the Diocese of Charlotte. Hello, David. How are you? Good evening, Michael. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you for joining us. I know this is uh, past hours for you now, so you're not on the clock, so we appreciate you joining us. My pleasure. Could you tell us, please, what we're looking for here is uh, the very first thing I want to do is clear up the confusion that's been flying around the blogs. uh, the bishop there is being accused in some headlines of throwing Sister Jane Dominic under the bus. And, you know, uh, from everything I have seen and read, there's not a word of truth to that, is there? Uh, no, there isn't. In fact, from the beginning, uh, in, in our very first statement, which came from our vicar of education, we, we, we took pains to recognize uh, Sister Jane Dominic's uh, credentials. She has a doctorate in sacred theology. The fact that she had spoken in the diocese many times and that she would be welcome uh, in the future. After issuing that statement, uh, Sister's uh, Mother Superior, her, her, her um, uh, uh, congregation, um, basically asked her to step away from uh, this kind of instruction for a while, and I believe that she is going on sabbatical. But the Diocese of Charlotte um, uh, never wanted to, quote, throw anybody under the bus uh, in this situation. Yeah, you had a, uh, uh, the, the, the bishop issued a, a statement on this and was, uh, you know, very clear about what had happened uh, because there was first the talk, and then there, there were these, I'm just catching people up in case I may not know, and step in and correct me, because obviously you've been there in the heat of the battle. So, uh, you know, there was this big uproar about what she'd said. Uh, then there was a petition drive by people uh, voicing their concern and saying this was a horrible thing to do to bring her here to talk and all of that. Then there was a counter petition drive saying, no, the Good Sisters is just teaching Catholic teaching, expressing Catholic teaching. Uh, and then there was another big meeting of almost a thousand parents. And am I correct that soccer games were canceled, all kinds of events were canceled, so this meeting could be had? And a thousand parents roughly showed up at this, right? Um, a thousand parents did show up at the um, uh, the parents meeting, which was uh, last Wednesday night. It's very interesting, Michael. I think the the thing that really kind of got the whole thing going uh, was social media. Um, uh, students at the school. Uh, put a uh, petition online that was very provocative in its nature regarding what they believe Sister had said. And that really got, uh, drew a lot of uh, public interest here locally and it has uh, kind of grown uh, virally since then. The students have since voluntarily on their own uh, taken the petition down and we, but we are still dealing with the, the fallout from the situation. And I do want to be clear that um, uh, the, the diocese, the, uh, our bishop, uh, the chaplain at the school um, have have said publicly have admitted that while sisters uh, what she was saying was supported by faith and reason um, she was talking about scientific studies about the the uh, the genesis of homosexuality in a person and while everything she was talking about was, was true scientifically based 
it probably was not appropriate in a full school assembly where you have students that are as young as 13 and some as old as 18. And that kind of thing needs to probably be done in a gender specific smaller type of a setting. Mm -hmm. Lesson learned for us and also lesson learned for us again is that we really can't under communicate to our parents when it comes to any kind of discussion in one of our schools about human sexuality. Mm -hmm. People want to know and we did not do a good job of informing them in this case. And of course, we, we will do in the future. Yeah, it's very, very, very kind of you to you know say that and clear that up and take, you know, responsibility that little part there do you uh so just to be clear when it comes to catholic teaching sisters said nothing that was against catholic teaching absolutely not uh the bishop is in full support of what she said as far as uh you know obviously stating catholic teaching and in fact i think michael everybody who all of the parents who were at the meeting um um support Catholic teaching. There might there might be some catechesis that is needed around certain points, but everybody who sends their child to Charlotte Catholic High School believes in the Catholic mission of the school. I don't think that there's there's any question about that. There was a, a really a question about appropriateness here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and just to be clear for the audience, uh, uh, Sister, uh, uh, in addition to talking about Catholic teaching, also brought in some other sociological studies and uh, and that sort of thing and you know uh, the the genesis of homosexuality is the as the catechism tells us still remains largely unknown but it isn't a topic certainly off the table that you can't discuss it's just we don't we can't talk with about it with the same clarity that we could about the actual teaching correct that that is absolutely right michael and i think one of the things that sister ran into in our society, there is a preponderance of, of, of thinking, information, that tells us that the genesis of homosexuality is nature. That is, it's somehow a genetic. Sister was teaching that homosexuality has or can have a basis in nurture, development, the way a person grows up. It is something that develops in them and is, they're, they're not born that way. I think that whole kind of thinking flies in the face of what people, the messages people are receiving in media these days. And um, uh, I think it may have come as a surprise to a lot of people that, uh, that, that, it, that it, this is possible and they reacted um, angrily to it. And you have to remember, Sister um, was, um, uh, was in this assembly, there was no video recording, there was no audio recording, and so we kind of depended on the descriptions of high school students as to what happened. And I don't know about yourself, Michael, but when I was in high school, I was prone to uh, some exaggeration. <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit. I'm, I'm sure we all were. David, we're going to uh, tell you thank you very much for coming and helping clarify it, shine some light on it. Uh, uh, you're right. When the media, when you have, uh, you know, cultural icons like Lady Gaga producing songs saying born that way. Uh, and uh, and that seems to be the general thrust of things. It's going to be very hard sometimes to break through all of that clutter. So, uh, you know, please give the bishop our best regards. Tell him thank you for his statement and support of Sister. I will. Thank you for, uh, thank you for coming on. I you know it's uh, still 8 o'clock your time also, so thank you very much for uh, spending your evening with us and our viewers and helping clear it up. It's my pleasure, Michael. Good night. Good night. Thank you, David. Hi there, Church Militant TV supporters. I'm Michael Voris. And I'm Rebecca Hasenauer. If you or someone you know is looking to sell or buy a home or a commercial property anywhere in the world, there's an amazing organization called Real Estate for Life that you should definitely check out. Real Estate for Life generously donates an average of $1,000 to churchmilitant.tv every time a home sale closes. It's a great way to support us here at CMTV. And don't forget, this comes at absolutely no cost to you. So please call or email Real Estate for Life today. All the information you need is in the description box. Michael Voris along with Rebecca Hasenauer for churchmilton.tv. God love you.